defeat the enemy. If that's okay with you tonight, I'll just take him on here a few minutes. I suppose if I, and if I allowed it to, I had earth, earth moving news today, but I don't allow it to because I'm not of that kingdom. I'm of a different kingdom. And um, I, um, I feel victorious tonight. Yes, amen. I know that the devil cannot take that which God has deposited in your life. And I refuse to give it up. So um, I know, and I don't have a multiplicity of words tonight, but uh, I'm on the attack tonight, which may be some scriptures. That be okay? Yes. Um, I know that his name is majestic tonight. Yes. And that you notice in your Bible in Psalms 8 yes. that the, the um, I, I want to say some things tonight. And I, like I said, I don't want to say a lot. But I, wanna, I want to uh, battle uh, the enemy tonight that's trying to destroy uh, me. Because the most important thing you have tonight as a, as a child of God is to believe the Word of God. You believe that tonight? Yes. Amen. Amen. Believe the Word of God. Uh, the church world, the church is full of unbelieving believers. My God. My God. Let me say that again. Say the, the, the world and the church is full of unbelieving believers. All right. Yes. So I'd like to talk a little bit about this word unbelief tonight, but... I want to start a little bit here. He said, how majestic is your name in Psalms 8. The most important thing about Psalms 8 is, you notice the uh, first one, verse 1. And then notice the last verse. He begins the same way that he ends here. That is, he ends the same way he begins here. And he says, uh, oh, Lord, how excellent is your name. And how, how mighty is your name. How many know his name is mighty tonight? Yeah. Yeah. His name is mighty tonight. His name is above every disease tonight. His name is above every malady tonight. His name is above every prognosis tonight. There isn't anything that His name is not above tonight. His name is stronger than cancer tonight. His name is stronger than disease or maladies in your life. As a matter of fact, we can call on His name. And demons have to flee and the devil has to run. You can call on his name and prison doors are open. You can call on his name and blinded eyes are open. Deaf ears are unstopped. You can call on his name and your children's brow that was uh, heated up with fever can be made whole tonight. I've never believed the word anymore, the word of God anymore than I believe it tonight. I never had any more reason to believe it than I believe it tonight. Yeah. Isn't that an oxymoron? You got it. Sometimes you you have to have a reason to believe the Word of God. Yes, sir. Well, Brother Marlowe said so. Right. Oh, yeah? Well, you need more than what he said. Right. Well, Brother Rhodes said, no, you need more than what oh. I said. Right. Yeah. There is a knower, there is a knowing down on the inside of you that comes to you at, at, at birth that you know that you have a relationship with him and you know that his name is above everything in the earth and that he set his glory upon the heavens. How excellent. And how excellent is your name. You know what that means? The Holy Spirit give it to me this way that he magnifies his name uh, by using the weakest of instruments and the weakest of men and the weakest of people, the people that you would not believe that he would use and why he would use them, he magnifies his name by using that. Paul said, notice your calling. He said, how that not many are called. He didn't say not any. He said not many are called. Uh, not, not many mighty, not many uh, noble, but he said God had chosen the foolish things to, to confound the, uh, the wisdom of this world. And... Uh, Jeremiah said, Let not the rich man glory in his riches, the mighty man in his might. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord and the God that exercises peace and loving kindness in the earth. 
So I choose to believe what Jeremiah said over what anyone else says. Yes, yes. I choose to believe what the Word of God says about where I am and what I'm doing tonight than any prognosis or any doctor in the entire universe tonight. Because my doctor carries his prescriptions in the hem of his garment. Blessed be his wonderful name. I'm a little bit out of the box tonight. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Please. And, um, the most important thing you can do tonight is, like I said, to believe the gospel. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 28, I believe it is, that he said, Behold, I lay in Zion for, for a, uh, a stone. He said, For a tried stone. And make no mistake, that's not Israel, that's not Israel, that's not some man, that's Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. I lay in Zion. That just means that out of Israel, Zion being Israel, Jerusalem being the people that he made a covenant with through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and yes. finally his, his sons in the earth populating what he has touched and what he has anointed that until Christ came, he took out of that ground something that he could deposit his glory in and that he could use. And he said, Behold, I lay in Zion for a, 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 a rock, for a foundation, a stone. Oh, they're just so, I don't have enough time to develop all of this. But he's precious. He was a precious cornerstone. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And what else does it say? A sure foundation. A sure foundation. <coughs> and he that believeth. Well, and I must believe. There has to be a capacity within me to believe. The reason we don't baptize babies here is because the Bible said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, and he that believeth and is baptized. <laughs> you, you can't even be baptized unless you believe. Amen. Don't, don't, don't go down in the water. That's why we don't baptize infants. They don't have the capacity to believe the gospel. Amen. How many believe the gospel tonight? Amen. I believe the gospel tonight Amen. because somebody has touched my mind and enabled me to believe. Amen. Amen. And through a lot of a lot of different things and a lot of my own uh, uh, sins in my own life and and problems in my own life that God has and I know what you're going to say and I don't need that it's too late for that David said um, he said um, uh, what did he say he, well he said a lot didn't he he said um, um, well, what did he say about affliction? He said that affliction, he said yes. He said, before I was afflicted, he said I went astray. So I, I don't, um, I don't make any, I, I know that there's been things that I've inflicted upon myself. And I know that God can instantly remove every problem. How many have problems here tonight? Let me see your hand. God can instantly remove that. You know he can. How many know he's able to do that instantly? And I'm not minimizing the gospel when I preach it. I'm not minimizing the gospel by saying that he cannot instantly do it. But David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. And I will tell you this, that affliction will do something for you that nothing else in this world will do. And there's not many amens on that one, but it's a truth. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know that because I'm a living example of that. But I made a promise to God this afternoon. I made a promise to Him that is what is left of me and what part is remaining of me, and I'm not, this is not a, a pity party. But I made a declaration because men of God and saints of God must know what we believe and we must hold to what we believe and nothing outside of Jesus Christ should change that in my life. Hey, praise Him! Wonderful name! Amen! Amen! I rose up tonight 
with a little bit of mail in the mailbox. I got to believe the gospel. I think, I firmly believe, and like I said, it won't take a lot of time tonight, but I believe that much of the weakness and much of the sickness in the church is because one of the things that's happened among us, and I've watched it recently, I say very little about it. I'm very observant. My pastor taught me to be. Yes. I've been with him since I was a young man. I've held to his words. I've listened to what he put in my heart. Yeah. And I think I made most of the classes, minus a few. But most of them I attended. Yeah. And I can tell you this. Paul said it. He said, unless you discern tonight that you're in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're not in a playhouse and you're not in a religious house and you're not in something that men built or you're not in a sealed house tonight, but if you perceive this to be the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're on your way. Hallelujah. And if you don't, if you don't perceive this to be his body, he said that's the reason there's many sick among us and even some die among us. Not what? Discerning the Lord's body. How? When Paul come to his senses, he was uh, battering and lampooning and lamb blasting the saints. And what did the Lord say to him? He said, why persecutest thou me? But when I touch his body or I touch his ministry, I better be very, very yes, careful sir, what I'm doing. Amen. Even David said, touch not the Lord's anointed, the Lord's anointed. Amen. And to my prophets, no harm. You know, there's people, things that we preachers like to use that, because it gives us a little edge. You know, gives us a little, you know, you know, sort of keeps you off of us. No, no, no. No, my friend. No, it doesn't stop a lot of people. Some people's tongues can be wrapped around the Statue of Liberty. And it wouldn't stop them. It wouldn't stop them. They would continue to be what they were uh, a year from now. But a saint of God, an elect of God, will correct through the correctives that is in the Word of God and bring themselves back in line with God and stop that nonsense and say, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Amen. Blessed be His wonderful name. Now i got to get to this. i got to get to this. You notice, and I want to work on this, and he that, uh, and he that believeth uh, shall, shall not be Shall not make haste. Uh, yes. Uh, shall not make haste. That means that if you really believe the word of God, you won't be relegated to a different position when it comes time for you to go to be with the Lord. I won't develop that any further than just that right there. The uh, second book, of the um, uh, it was uh, John. It was the Gospel of John. Now, if you go with me to the Gospel of John, I'm going to hit three scriptures, and then that's it. But... Um, uh, the Gospel of John, see, John is a very important person in the Bible, and he's important because he awakens the faith of God's people to several things. John was intrigued with this life that was inerrant in Christ. John had this, and there's no reason, there's one of the reasons that, that he's called the beloved disciple, and no doubt was closer than any other disciple, uh, to Jesus Christ because he early on recognized by revelation that there was something majestic about this Christ yes. and that he in fact was a lot more than most gave him credit for. It's the very reason he opened his scripture uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was oh, God. God. Said all things were made by him without him there wasn't anything made that was made. Now get this, and him was life. And him was life. Now that life was, is, is a direct, uh, it, it really is against the uh, creationist. It's against people that believe that it, it's, it's, part of, um, it's part of the overall gospel. Let's put it that way. Because there are people who believe that, that matter gave rise to life and, and there was matter and then there was life. But John said otherwise. Right. John said life gave rise to matter. Yes. 
and matter did not give, we did not start out as some infinitesimal speck somewhere and eventually become what we are now. Um, but in him was life. A good scripture to nail that down with, John 5 and verse 25, Jesus said, um, as the Father hath life in himself, he said, even so has he given the Son to have life in himself. That means that that just means that inherently, as God is inherently life, and who is a self-perpetuating entity, and is a ball of fire, by the way, he's not fire, but it's just one of the, the phrases that he's fire, uh, but he is, um, he dwells in the light that no man uh, can approach to, and uh, Jesus then, Paul said, it brought to light, light brought to light life and immortality through the gospel. That means that there, there are things about life and immortality that you can only get through the message of Jesus Christ. It didn't come from any other source. It didn't come from the Old Testament. It wasn't within Jeremiah. It wasn't in one of the other Old Testament scriptures. Praise God, I feel a heavy anointing here tonight. It means that he brought to light life and immortality through the gospel that he brought. Amen, brother. This stuff is so deep, I'm about to drown. And um, he, he brought this, this life. And so John, uh, he, he saw it early on. In him was life. And that wasn't just a life for the first century church, but all life. Come Amen. from Jesus Christ. That's why this ministry, I was talking to Brother Adolf today, and if you don't know the doctrines of this body, yeah. while we still have, and I want to say it while he's here tonight, honor our pastor. Listen to our pastor. Because we want him to teach as much as he can teach, as much as he can, and go as long as he can, because how many needs to know what is in his heart and how many would like to have what's in his heart? Amen. Amen. That's the reason you've got to stop bothering, bothering him with your hangnails. Preach it, brother. Preach it. And I, I know I know him. Amen. Believe me, I know him. And he doesn't want me to say that, but I feel like a son in the house. You know the great thing about the prodigal son is he was not the hero. You know who the hero in Luke 15 was? The father. The father. The father was the hero. Amen. I don't know if I can finish this. I'm just so overwhelmed tonight. I was determined to tell the devil, doesn't matter what he told me today, I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I won't tell you everything, but it wasn't good. I shared it with my pastor. Brother Morrow was it great news. Is it the best news I shared with you today in my life? Probably not. But I've never felt any more faith this moment than I felt in all my entire life. Because it means something now. It's not just a story. It's not just something I do when I feel good. I, I'm not just here tonight because it's the right thing to do. I'm here because my life depends on me being here tonight. intrigued with this with this Messiah. John was intrigued with this Christ, the Christos, the anointed one. He was blown away when he was able to reach way past Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and all of their genealogies and what they gave and the reasons they gave them. They reached right into the very beginning when it was just God all by himself and then spun it from there. How did he do it? 
He spun it by he spun it by revelation. That's how he did it. He said, uh, "In in the Word was 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 in him, and it was him." I'm messing it up, but that's what it means. It was in him before he got out of there. Yes, yes. And then you notice here that he then he begins to, and the Gospel of John is written to uh, Brian to finally wake up faith in people and cause the human heart to come to the realization yes. of what Christ really came to do. Yes. And over in the 20th chapter, I want to just hit this. I said three scriptures. I hope I'm not over my time. I saw somewhere on the Internet. No, it was Brother Adolph showed me a church he built today and somewhere in Texas, and they had a big 14-inch clock on the front of the pulpit, yes. not for the preacher to see, but for the people to see out there to tell him when it was time to stop. I'm glad we don't have one here tonight. Um, in the, uh, let's see, in the 20th uh, uh, chapter, in verse 31, I'm just going to read these, and it says, but, but these are written, that is this book, what God gave him, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. Hey, hey. Amen. 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 Oh, brother. This book was written. What God gave John was written that we might believe. Everybody say believe. Believe. And that you might have life through his name. Now notice chapter 2. Just go a few doors to the left and, and verse uh, chapter 2. Well, let's look at chapter 1. We were there earlier. Let's look at verse 12 and chapter 1. And um, in verse 12, it says here that, um, and all of you know these scriptures, but he came... But uh, to, to, to as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Okay? Now, chapter 2, he's working with his disciples. He's coming into this uh, the marriage, uh, the, uh, the um, marriage in Canaan of Galilee which his mother gives the, the statement that the Roman Catholic Church uses, whatsoever he saith unto you, doeth it. And uh, it's still tonight, whatever he says unto you tonight, how many are willing to do what he says to you tonight? Yeah. And you do, you do it without reservation. You do it what he says to you. What Mary was right then, she's right tonight. Whatever he saith unto you, be willing to do it. Amen. And then verse 11 this whole thing that happened, happened for what happened, it was, it was what happened, but it wasn't everything that happened. Okay? I don't have time to develop it. Verse, verse 11. This is the beginning of the miracles which Jesus did in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples, what? Believe. Believed on him. Yes. Amen. Now, that, that, that is important that they believe the gospel. It's important tonight that you believe the gospel. Now look at verse 22. And when his disciples, when, and let's see, let me get my, let me get my glasses on it. And, and when, therefore, he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that uh, when he saith unto them, and they believed the scripture. Now remember, John is writing this some time removed from when the actual events happened. Yes. I think that I don't know now, just right off, just when he did write this particular book. I want to say it was um, maybe 50, 60 years later. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe 40. Anyway, he remember that he is. We're we're reading it after the fact, but he he's putting it down that he said, and they believe the scripture. And the word which Jesus said. Verse 23. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover. Uh, in the feast day. Many believed. Now it's possible. 
to believe and not believe far enough, strong enough, sure enough, right. steady enough. Yes. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's possible to believe, but don't believe enough. And that's, that, that, that is what I'm trying to say, to, say tonight. Yeah. I yeah. may be feeble in saying it tonight, but I believe God wants to strengthen the belief of everybody here tonight. I believe God wants to strengthen our belief tonight. How many would like for God to strengthen your belief in Him? And so, and so um, I want to use this last verse. And I'll show you what, what happened and why that as we get close to the end of the age, He's only going to give this to people that believe, as we started that scripture, that shall not make haste. Peter said, they would not be ashamed. And Paul quoted it, they shall not be confounded. All right. And he said here, but he said, but, um, let's see, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Say, he knew all men. He knew all men. Believe me, he knows everybody here tonight. He knows. He knows. He knows every one of us tonight. He knows whether we believe the gospel tonight. He knows how much of the gospel we believe tonight. He knows what we're going to do with what we have tonight. He knows whether you're going to respond to it or not. Whether you're going to give in to it or not. And I can tell you right now, this is not a time for anybody in this church to be discouraged or to be an unbeliever tonight, God is moving in this church in a mighty, mighty way. Amen. How many people have been added here over the last two months? Put your hands up here tonight. How many have been added to this church in the last few months? Put your hands up here tonight. Take a look at this. Amen. Who are you going to believe? Amen. You're going to believe God tonight? Amen. Or are you going to believe somebody else tonight? Amen. I tell you, we're living in the most we're living in the most exciting days. I'm through tonight. I'm just going to exhort another minute. We're living in the most exciting time Amen. the church has ever known. Amen. I believe it. Amen. 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 Yeah. Just as well get ready because the last parable. And the book of Matthew chapter 13 yes. said the net was cast out into the sea. Yes. Yes. And it said it brought in fish yes. of every kind. So if you're going to pick, but I like that brother because he wears his hair like I do. I like that sister because she looks like me. You're going to be left out. The net is going to be thrown into the sea. And you don't have a choice. And I don't have a choice. I must get my foot prepared. I must get my life ready. I must get my eyes on the goal. I must get a vision. I must wake up. I must be alert and be ready for what God is getting ready to do in these last days. Let's give him a praise offering here tonight. Thank you.